this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with the build series for the Nitron Nitro Helicopter. Um, this will be for continuing on with the mainframe so this will be part two. Um, we'll be working towards the front now. Uh, our previous segment we went ahead and we got completed up until this part. Got everything installed, we got our rear uh, elevator servo and everything in frame supports and everything have been installed so you guys should be up to this point okay um, and then what we're going to want to do is let's go ahead and take a look at the components we're going to need to get out so we can go ahead and set this assembly for now just set it over to the side let's see if I can do that without mine falling down here um, and the first thing we're going to take a look at is the front right side of the frame okay so front right and that would be if the nose was facing you, okay? So this is what's going to have our throttle servo. Um, and it's also going to have our uh, RPM sensor, our magnetic sensor, if you guys are using that. Um, if you want to use like a backplate sensor, um, they have the ones that patch like into the servos. I've never used one of those before. Or just any other variation. But in mine, I'm going to be using a, <clears throat> a magnetic sensor. So go ahead and get your front right side frame piece out. Uh, as always, inspect it. Make sure you know you don't see any sharp edges or burrs or defects or anything. Okay, so let's get that bad boy out. Um, now, of course, the throttle servo, you're going to want to make sure you've got readily available. Now, I'm doing the uh, the BK servos on my Cyclix and Rudder. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I can't talk today. Rudder. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and be using a KST BLS815 version 2.0. Uh, this is what I shall be using for the throttle servo, okay? It's what I had on hand, and honestly, these are amazing servos, and I know that it's it's going to perform exceptionally well. So, uh, get out your throttle servo that you need. Now, for your, if you're using the magnetic sensors, guys, take in mind, these come in all shapes and sizes. Um, you know, there's one from a line. This one that I have sitting here is actually the Futaba branded sensor and you can see it's robust I really like it it's it's got a nice heavy-duty all encased plastic mount uh, it looks very reliable the magnetic sensor on the tip is is very big um, the Align one kind of has a little bit of like a hook at the end uh, but it's what I've usually used but I'm gonna try out this Futaba one this one comes with looks like a little attachment that will actually clock the RPM I don't know if this is required or not, guys. This this video is not about the Futaba magnetic sensor. But anyways, this is what I'm going to be using. So make sure you have yours, um, whatever you're using, make sure you got the right materials that you're going to be installing. So we've got our magnetic sensor there. Now, one thing that I am going to do that's, that's not going to be necessarily in this step, but I'm going to do it at this point in time because it's going to just make my job easier down the road is we have went ahead and done the, the clutch stack video and went over everything that entails um, on assembling and getting out this particular piece, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove my clutch at this time because I'm going to go ahead with my, with my magnetic sensor kit also came my magnets. So I don't see any reason why we shouldn't go ahead and epoxy in our magnets. And of course, if you look at the top of your clutch bell, you'll see that you've got your two indents for where your magnets are going to go. Um, very, very important, and I'm going to show you guys a real quick tip that I use. I'm sure most of you are aware of this, but since we're building a heli, we might as well go over all this stuff here. But let me get out my magnets. Um, the way most uh, nitro RPM sensors work for magnets is you want to make sure the clutch bell is balanced. So you can't just put one magnet in and expect it not to be uneven in weight, even though they're very light in weight. So you want to mount them evenly. The thing is, is one has to be uh, 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 opposite of the other. So one is going to be positive side up, and one is going to be negative side up. You can't have both positives up or both negatives up. Otherwise, you're not going to get the kind of readings that you need. So what I do to make sure that I don't accidentally install my magnets correct, uh, incorrectly is, uh, obviously everyone's pretty familiar with, with how magnets work, right? Um, the negatives attract and then the positives push away or, or however you guys want to word that. So if you take your magnets, you'll notice that they're stuck together. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, my magnets, my two magnets are stuck together. 
So I know that right now the way the stack would sit is it's gonna go negative, positive, negative, positive, right? That's keeping all my magnets together. Um, what you can do if you if you if you need to I think these little guys are hard to get apart, aren't they? Ah, there we go. Okay. If you need to take them apart, you can. And then what you can do is test them out and see, like, like if I try to put them together here, they won't. They push it, they push away from each other. So if I simply flip this one around, it'll stick, right? Boom. Okay. So what I'm going to do to make sure that I mark these correctly is I just take a, a permanent marker. You can use yellow, red, green, blue, black, purple, whatever you want. But I mark each top side um, that's, that's positive in this case, right? So what I would do is I would take this and I'm going to color it black. I'm not going to just sit here and make it all pretty, but you can even just put a dot. So I got a little black dot on that one. And then simply just slide it over to the side. Ah, oh, these are tricky to get apart. Slide it over to the side. And then I'm going to color that other one black as well. Alright, so color that one black. There we go. So now I've got a black dot on the top surface or the positive surface of each magnet. So that I know see if you guys can see that, so that I know that when I go to install this into my machine, I should see one magnet that's black, and I should see one magnet that is not black. So one magnet will be shiny, one magnet will be black. I know that positive is black, negative is shiny. So just a quick tip for you guys when you install your magnets, um, that way, because if you epoxy these magnets in and they're in the wrong polarity or, or orientation, it can cause a lot. They're hard to get out, basically. So you might even have to buy a new clutch belt. So do that. Get that all done. One last thing as well. When you're mounting in the magnetic sensor, you're going to want to make sure that it's the right distance from the clutch bell. Um, too high or uh, too high, it might not um, read the positive signal as it comes around. And too low, it might be interacting with the case and cause damage, right? So what I'm going to do is, it doesn't say this yet in the manual, but I'm going to get out the little baggie here that has the side mounting plates for the clutch bell assembly and I think some of the other parts on the frame. Get that out, because I'm going to actually just loosely test fit in. Um, I'm going to lightly mount in the magnetic sensor, and then I'm going to go ahead and mount on, using the bolts in the bracket, I'm going to mount on the, uh, the, the clutch stack assembly. If you scroll down in the manual, which I'll show you in just a moment, just a few steps, you'll see the instructions for it. That way, when I go to lock down my sensor and tighten in all the bolts, I know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to not interact with the casing, but also it's going to be close enough. I think it's usually got to be no less than like 2 millimeter gap in order for it to clock that uh, positive magnet as it, as it roams around here. Uh, but then I'm also going to mix up my, my two-part um, epoxy, and I'm going to go ahead and install my magnets as well. Please take in mind, the reason why I removed the clutch is because these, uh, these indents where the magnets mount, you can almost, you can see that there's a, what would you call it, like a seepage hole in the bottom. Because when you put the epoxy in and then push in the magnet, some of your epoxy is going to come out through the bottom. So make sure that you clean up the bottoms really, really well. Let your epoxy finish. If you've got to do any cleaning up or scraping or anything after, do it. Uh, but you want to make sure you don't accidentally glue, uh, glue your clutch bell or epoxy your clutch bell to your clutch. That'd be kind of a nightmare, right? So <laughs> um, let's jump over real quick to the manual and just kind of do a quick visual review. You guys can see here that I have the front side... Um, of the frame here, so it actually says front side left, where the throttle server would go. I call it the front side right, I guess, because I have the heli facing towards me. So if the tail was facing you, it'd be the front side left, right? Um, but anyways, we're going to be doing the throttle servo install as we just went over. It's going to mount from the inside, so you'll get out two of your mounting plates, your screws and your washers. Go ahead and mount that, square it up. Again, I'm hard mounting. I'm not using the rubbers uh, for this machine. Um, and then it kind of gives you instructions here. Again, it's pretty basic, guys, uh, for mounting on the sensor. Just kind of wrap your cable up for now. And then again, I'm going to install on the uh, clutch stack assembly and make sure I have the right dimensions for the sensor before I tighten everything. Um, and actually, let me see if I can jump over to where it shows you that. Let's see. It's right... Yeah, right here. So 
it'll show you what orientation and everything to go ahead and put these bolts in, put the bar on, and just kind of loose fit that in. And honestly, you can just leave it in if you want. You don't have to take it back off. I probably won't. And then we'll be able to move on. So I'm going to get to that point, okay? I'm going to get everything done there. And then, um, if you guys remember, we did also complete some of these sub-assemblies earlier um, within the first couple of videos. Go ahead and get those out because this is pretty straightforward stuff here, guys. We'll go ahead and put on the nose plate, um, the spacer brackets, and then this is your gyro mounting plate. I am not going to apply Loctite on the nose plate or the gyro mounting plate because I'm probably going to have to remove them to install my electronics. Um, so I'm going to save that video for a little bit of a later date. Let's just get to the point that we need to and then I'll kind of demonstrate how I'm going to set everything up at that point in time. But I'm going to get to this, this step here and then we'll go ahead and we'll come back and we'll do a final review on the um, front right side frame assembly or if you're looking at it from the back the the front left okay so let me get this done guys and we will come back and do a review okay you guys so i wanted to do a real quick segment um i've gotten up until that first part uh specified in the manual for the the front right or or, or back left side of the frame however you guys want to specify you know which one there's only one cut out for the throttle servo and and the and the governor sensor and stuff so Anywho, here's something that's of high importance, guys. Please do not skip this step if you're using a magnetic sensor because if you get this entire machine all the way assembled and then you finally realize that your magnet isn't sensing right or something, you're looking at a pretty big teardown because getting, getting access to the magnetic sensor, you can see how that's mounted. It's a pain in the butt when the heli is fully constructed, okay? You're not going to be able to just... I mean, yeah, you can just tear off the side of the frame, but you're going to be unplugging all your servo wires and stuff and removing the, the, the clutch stack. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do a quick test on mine. Let's see if I can get you a shot in there. Sorry, it's a little bit on the dark side here today. Let's do a little bit of a zoom in. This will help. Um, but So what I did... There we go. That's better. So what I did with mine, um, as you guys can see, is I used uh, this little bracket, right, and I mounted in my clutch, my clutch stack. Now, what you'll notice here is because of the different pinion options and stuff in the Nitron is this has cutouts to where I can actually bias this forward and backward. See the play I've got here? And the reason for this is for your pinion mesh, of course, if you change pinion sizes um, higher or lower, you're still going to be contacting the, the gearing and everything. And then you've got shims for the motor to, of course, accommodate this. But here's what you want to make sure is that no matter what, wherever your sensor is mounted, you should make sure that it can accommodate the magnets being sensed all the way back and all the way forward, okay? So what you're going to want to do, what I found is I mounted my my, uh, my magnetic sensor, and it, it again has slots so it can be biased forward or backwards. I had to push mine uh, this way, all the way towards the nose, and then I tightened everything down, made sure that it was sitting nice and straight, okay? But here's, here's the test that we want to check for to make sure that everything's the way that it's supposed to be. Um, and, and again, guys, I installed the throttle servo, as you can see, but that's you don't really need to review that. That's pretty straightforward, okay? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bias this all the way back. And I'm going to grab my tool and just kind of tighten it down. You don't got to do anything too fancy, but just kind of lock it into place, okay? That way it doesn't move on us. Now, this is as far... Uh, forward, I guess, because here's the nose. So this is as far forward as the clutch stack can go. I can't push it anymore. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to check to make sure that my magnets are sensing correctly first before I s seal up the machine and, and move forward, right? So what I've done is I've just gotten out my, my fly barless system. Um, you can use any active power source in this event. And then I've got my sensor rig right here. I'll do a zoom in for a second, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug everything in. And this little device right here is going to indicate when it senses um, or does not sense my magnets. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead real fast. Let me provide power to my system just so that we can get signal here. Okay. Now like we also talked about guys, um, on, my, on my clutch bell assembly I went ahead and I um, put in my magnets. And you can see here that one is got the silver side exposed. OK, 
okay? That one there is going to be my negative. And then you'll see as we rotate, it's probably a little bit harder, but uh, you've got a black magnet there, right? That one there is going to be my positive, okay? Now what I want to pay attention to is this little sensor, and I'm just going to kind of see if I can do this so you guys can see. I'm going to set this down, and I'll go ahead and I'll hold the sensor up right here. Now you'll notice as I rotate this, I should, at some point it should turn off, right, right there, boom, okay? And what you want to look for is make sure that your magnet is um, directly underneath that. So right here it's on. So this means it's not uh, sensing any, any polarity, right? But if I pass the black magnet right underneath, it turns off. Do it fast, do it slow, do whatever you need to do, but make sure that it's got a nice, it should have a good resolution to it. Like there's there's a good maybe two to three millimeters that I can actually move the, um, the uh, uh, clutch bell without that turning off, right? So let's see if we can get some focus in here. Yeah, man. Maybe not. All right, there looks good. So anyways, that's what you guys want to look for, okay? So make sure that that is sensing, okay? Now also, one last quick check that you're going to want to do is go ahead and push your clutch, uh, clutch stack assembly all the way forward. Um, oops, actually, I'm going to have to loosen that because I tightened it down, didn't I? Okay, go ahead and we're going to push it all the way forward. Boom, all the way. Hold it in place. I'm going to lock it down. Now, this would be the most extreme condition here, or the smallest pinion, I guess, which means we're going to have a lot of biasing forward here. Now, take in mind that this sensor also can be shifted. Again, like I said earlier, it can be shifted forward or backwards. But I, don't, I, I want to find the sweet spot where no matter where I move my clutch stack, this is going to always pick up, okay? So now that I'm all the way forward, let's double check this again. Let me find my black magnet there. Okay, so we've got red light on red light off okay so look at that guys so this is actually sensing um, in all positions that I can possibly have my clutch stack so that's good that's good news that means let me go and power this down that means that no matter what I found the optimal position for my governor sensor now I can go ahead and plug it into my fly barless system and do um, you know all the setup and the procedures and everything but I found that to be a very important step um, at this time again guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave my clutch stack and everything assembled onto the machine. I'm just going to bias it all the way forward um, to allow for, you know, when I get ready to install the motor and, and what have you. But I wanted to share that step. I find it to be very, very important because you don't want to have to repeat this once it's done. Okay, so there we go. Um, within this video here, so frame assembly number two, we've got the magnetic sensor installed. We've got the magnets glued in or epoxied into our clutch bell. We've assembled this, made sure that the biasing uh, is covered by all sensing, and we've got our throttle servo installed. Like I showed you guys in the manual earlier, I'm going to go ahead and throw on just those other little sub-assemblies like the front nose and the, um, the, uh, the, the fly barless system tray. And then uh, we'll come back and do a quick final review, and then we'll move on to the next steps. Alrighty, everybody, so here she is. Um, frame assembly number two up until this point into the manual. Let's get a nice, good, quick look. I did not lock tight again the the little nose plate tray and um, let's turn it this way and the uh, the gyro or fly barless mounting tray because again I'm probably going to remove these to do some wiring and some internal work. Now it does look like the wiring on this machine it's going to be tight, guys. So we're going to have to use a lot of uh, creativity to really get into all these little nooks and crannies and get us a nice wiring job. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Feel free to get up until this point. And then we'll follow on into the next, uh, we'll go Frames Part 3 series. So, again, thank you so much for watching, you guys. Remember to comment and subscribe. Remember, if Freddy can fly, so can you.